Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Hopefully you guys had a uh, good weekend. We did. Good week. You guys have already started your week. So we are working on this transfer case here today. This is a Dana 20 for a Bronco. Pretty basic. Here's the new seal kit for it. Looks like someone's been in here before and they cut this so we're gonna check inside and see if they what they did if this actually can be um, twin shifted quite possibly it can be one thing that is noticed is in here where's our splines where the splines go jared i have no clue <laughs> we really just like noticed that like five minutes ago so we're still we're gonna break this thing down we're gonna look around and see what we can find um as far as maybe replacing that piece but we're going to break this down, check out the condition on the inside, get all the other nastiness cleaned out of it. Because if you guys remember months ago, we had all this sand blasted and there is sand all over the inside. So I don't know what that would sound like if it was <laughs> running. Probably not great. No. Does it even turn? No. <laughs> Just, nope. <laughs> nope. So, um, we're going to break this down real quick, kind of just see the condition on the inside, um, probably do a, a quick Google machine search and figure out if we can find that piece to go in here for the splines, probably kind of count the splines that are on the transmission sitting upstairs. What else are we doing today, Jared? Probably this. Hopefully we can get to that transmission, dropping that in. Um, we did get the new support from Tom's Bronco for the... AOD, so that's sitting over there, all the hardware's in it, so we're good there. But hopefully we get that transmission dropped in, this all fitted in with it, and depending on how much time, paint them. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. So this, I think, is gonna be the big issue right now, seeing what we're missing. Yeah. If, you know, if we are missing something. I think we can have this thing broken down like 20 minutes. Yeah. Max. I mean, it's, it's quick. Um, assemble reassembling is the more difficult part but <clears throat> uh, the good thing is is we do have the seal kit and everything else I'm thinking maybe we don't put the new seals in it yet until we have that piece that we need and make sure it all fits in there but we can still take it and paint this up maybe let's break it apart and see what we can do we'll be back What are we doing, Jared? We're at AutoZone, getting a inch and an eighth socket for the nut <laughs> on the yoke. <laughs> so, <laughs> all my tools are still at my house. And Jared got all the impact-friendly ones for the large size sockets. I never do that because they don't fit. They're too thick. They never get in there. I just buy good sockets, like, you know, and you could just warranty them, bring them back, whatever. But we have all the badass impact ready black sockets, <laughs> but they won't slide into there because the, the wall is too thick on it. So instead of just going to my house and grabbing tools, we decided to go buy new tools. So we'll see how this works out. <laughs> but we lock the dogs inside. Hopefully they don't destroy anything, knock over hoods or anything like that. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Hopefully we find out what we need and we'll be back in the shop soon. So we got what we need. One thing that is interesting is I always thought these were a 12 point socket. Right, because there's 12 points. But apparently it's like a baker's dozen. The guys at autos don't think this is a 13 point. <laughs> so let us know in the comments. Is it just us or does it seem like when I was a kid, maybe it's because I didn't know very much, but you go to the auto parts store and these guys were God. They knew everything about every vehicle ever. So helpful. And today I go in there and it's a 13 point socket. <laughs> and it's not like this guy was young. I mean, he's, he's old. to be our grandpa. He's older, yeah, older than my dad. And he doesn't even know it's a 12 point socket. I mean, it's, I, I don't know. I thought oh, that was a standard, but let us know. What changed? 
why is it that when you go to the auto parts store now, is it just the computers? You know, they just, uh, the, the computers that made us all dumber because we don't have to actually know anything, we just Google it? I don't know. But we're on the way back to the shop right now. We're gonna give this uh, a whirl, get this thing broken down. We did figure out that we do need an adapter to go between the AOD and the Dana 20. Um, it was something that we just didn't think about. Jared knew kind of just forgot about it got so much other stuff going on with this build so that will be another piece that will have to be uh, ordered and uh, put on there soon but as soon as we get back to the shop turn the time lapse back on break this thing the rest of the way down and uh, see what we can do on it today but we're definitely going to try to get the transmission and cross member at least set into place so we can be ready prepped for paint on some of those parts but we'll be back soon I want it all, any way at all Thought I missed it by waiting for the game respond For the lost and found, for the home alone And for you to come Alright guys, I'm gonna have Chris explain this a little bit more <laughs> Cause we literally we took it apart We literally watched some guy give some crazy explanation on how to get this thing apart which made no sense chris and i were looking for this what was it a what are those c-clip snap ring a snap ring <laughs> and it ain't there one it's not here and two we just watched another video and we literally just knocked this entire shaft out through here so what's on the, the guy's name in case anyone needs to watch it oh matt's garage you guys all, if you guys watch Broncos, you guys know that he built that entire body from scratch, um, which actually was my reference point when I built my 66 body. So if you guys haven't followed him yet, I highly suggest you do, Matt's Garage. But anyways, to get this rod out, we literally just tapped that thing all the way through if you guys didn't know. And we just have a time lapse going, so we're not really explaining anything. But that's where we're at this mess right now all this sand and oil but anyways quick update we're almost at the point where we can just start cleaning everything up and then reassemble yeah hopefully we can grab one of oh that's not the one what this yeah that one so we tore that seal up trying to get it off and that's a bearing oh the bearing sorry no it'll work back into place when we torque it down so anyways guys stay tuned Alright guys, quick update. Chris got off this all put back together. Yeah. Slowly getting the parts all cleaned up as we go. I'm gonna take my little angle grinder, clean up all these surfaces before we put these new seals or those gaskets back on those seals in. But uh I know this thing has been a pain in the butt, but it functions. Yeah, we have the new seals right here for these shift rails. Those are ones that a lot of guys don't do <laughs> uh, because everything else here, you can kind of just like, I've seen guys, you loosen them up, break it apart a little bit. I'm not talking about this particular transfer case, but all transfer cases. They'll break it up, squirt <laughs> gasket maker around and tighten it all back up and it just leaks right here. Even though this is kind of usually up on a higher angle, but when you're wheeling and you're sloshing and you're sitting on your side, you'll end up leaking. So, yep, just a quick update, guys. Just getting these parts cleaned up and put back together. I know it's not really like a how to video, but just another uh, 
video of what we're doing. What it takes to actually make one of these Broncos happen. Yeah. Yep. So stay tuned and keep this time lapse going. I'm waiting for the curtain call. Guess I want it all. Anyway at all. Thought I missed it by waiting for the game respond. For the lost and found. For the all right, guys. Been here all day long. We thought for sure we we're gonna be able to drop a transmission transfer case in this Bronco today. And that is not the case. Go F yourself. <laughs> <laughs> this is hell. So we have got this thing all cleaned up, got the surfaces all sanded up, got the old gaskets taken off, and got this thing put back together. Chris torqued it all down, and it's all locked up. Well, well luckily I had up, a feeling I wanted to test fit everything back together before we put anything on the the seals and luckily we did <laughs> so, so what's happening is uh when we crank this thing down torque it all down it just binds up so what it looks like is we don't have enough shims we have i think three shims on this cover right now and uh it looks like we possibly could use a little more um i don't know so <laughs> yeah that's I, what it looks like i had thought that there's a possibility that the bearings were not the right ones because one of the race was different than the bearing um as far as brand everything after some more research, talking with uh, uh, another company that we got to get some parts from, they assured me that they are the right ones, it'll work just fine. So these shims that are on this back cover that hold everything together, obviously when they're shims, it means that you can add or subtract for reasons um, we're going to need to add because it's just too much pressure holding this thing in. Also. We never did clean this up really good up in here. I doubt that's it. <laughs> so that's where we're at. We haven't had a whole lot of footage on this thing. We've just been frustrated trying to get it put back together. <laughs> yeah. So, well, we didn't have any RCV. Yeah. Well, what else home. were we missing? Oh, we had to the go socket. get a socket because all the other sockets were too big to fit inside of these teeny little yokes. Yep. So been a slow very non-productive day we got to clean you brought the heater so all the heat can go sit up in the oh you just gotta lean over the top that's the trick you just gotta go over here just like this you feel that it's like 150 degrees yeah you feel that you back. right here <laughs> Beep. Just so all that you've been there <laughs> so we're gonna crank this back down see what we need to do we may have to grab some more shims, which means most likely we'll have to go, I don't know. But stay tuned, we will keep you guys updated. What'd you figure out there, Jared? So, putting this gear back together, and if you guys haven't taken this thing apart yet, or you're at that portion of the teardown and all these little things go flying on the ground in buckets that are not supposed to go in. I think there's 48 of them. <laughs> but they all need to go back in. So you have two or three spacers. One goes each end and one goes in the middle. So I was just putting this thing together from this side. But then I realized this spacer on the outside sits completely flush with this so pack that thing up with petroleum petroleum jelly or grease i like the the jelly i he forgot he always has a lot of hand too, so. <laughs> so, i knew that was coming anyways i put this thing down on the table that spacer and then put those things in i highly recommend doing it that way because i was holding it the whole time in my hand just now oh so until if you do I, it this way then you can just load it from the top yeah, you can load it from the top and so then now, it's, and it has that uh that spacer in there as a backing yep the backing so it's not just because i literally just freehanded that 
So you just pack this thing full of jelly. Ooh. Slide the, this is the middle one. The middle ring, divider, whatever. Yep. And this jelly is not, I mean, it's not gonna go anywhere. And now, you know, it's the, do a little bit more on the outside. And the worst part is literally just grabbing them. What I realized is just keep it on your finger and it actually sticks. Like a little magnet. All right. But don't put them in a magnet tray because <laughs> that's what's making them stick to the freaking thing. I can't grab it with my finger. You can see they're pretty much just sticking to my glove. So now you have that pressure you can actually push down on that center spacer. So it's really not as bad as it looks, huh? No, it's not. It's you see, it's quick. Oh, and we figured this out too. Did we talk about that? What? All it is, we just need some new shims back shims. here. Yeah, yeah. Wild horses, you can buy a whole pack of them for like nine bucks. So that's cool. <laughs> so I just figured when I first did the 205 transfer case on the 66, I pulled this gear out and these things went everywhere. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like you think losing like a screw or a bolt's bad, but 50 of these things hit the ground. And mind you, I didn't know it was supposed to have like 48 of them. But you're like, oh, I'm never gonna find them all. Did you? Yeah. And then I bought a whole rebuild kit from Wild Horses. You didn't really care, but I did have all of them. All right. Well, you're so, almost in there, and then uh, I think we'll work together on getting this actually put in place here yep all right we'll be back what'd you do i didn't do anything you did it you had one job and you were supposed to show me where all the needles were okay Jaden. <laughs> so this is all put back together we're, just we're literally talking about we're going to put the the RCV and seals and everything in here on all the bearing faces. We're going to take petroleum jelly and put it on there before we uh, paint it so we can just wipe it off after everything dries. And then... <laughs> Pop it back we out. We are having a bad day. Yeah, but we're learning a lot. This is a typical... This is, what, this is why people watch stuff like this. Because people watch always it think that up? they're the only ones that no. have stuff like this happen. No, I right. thought two hours. It's like four parts. But no, yeah. it's all day. All day. Trip to the auto parts we store. Paint it. We, we still have to have paint to... it. We don't. We need that additional shims for the backside the here. Adapter. The, the, the adapter. <laughs> the six hundred fifty dollar adapter. No. So. Well, we're gonna take it back apart. See you guys soon. All right, somehow we're able to get that needle bearing back in. And of course, there were two sides. So I don't know if you guys remember, there was the two outside, what do you call those, spacers? Just a washer, just washer. Like a retaining washer. And know. then there was one in the middle. So I was trying to see if it was the side over here, but it was, and I told Chris it was the other side. So we pulled that pin out a little bit further was able to get it in without taking all this he apart. Reach his fingers all the way deep in there. Yep. You know, and make sure you curl up. So, yep. <laughs> got to hit the rib spot. <laughs> so, Textured. <laughs> <laughs> we were able to get it put back together. But these are the little learning experiences that make the next one a lot more gooder. I ain't mad at it. So, <laughs> but it's way more gooder. We're going to go on to the next part.
doing, huh? It's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. So, it's together. What did we discover, Jared? How do we make it all fit? You don't tighten all the screws. <laughs> so, all you gotta do is just leave these ones just finger tight, and then it all works just fine. It all fine. spins. It all spins, no problem. So, that's, that's the trick, guys. You guys are having issues with yours just don't tighten these screws <laughs> so there's actually shims that we got to throw in there but this gives us enough for paint we are going we actually have bolts to replace all these so after paint just like everything else we do we pull the old bolts out put new bolts in we have the rcv new gaskets around here and here and here we have another one for here eventually once we get the the kit we were able to get or jared was able to get the other uh, needle bearing up in that sun b actually we on these we didn't put the uh the the, the ball and the spring and whatnot for oh, the shift rails yeah so that still that. needs to be done yep what is he doing right the home is that it yeah He, he went full retard. So, <laughs> God. So, that's it. All right. Well, that's it. It's a wrap. Like, subscribe, blah, blah. Comment below if you guys have any issues with one of these Broncos. You have questions, wants to see us do something, whatnot. Um, but the transfer case is done. The transmission is up there. We did not put that in, did not put the cross member in, did not do anything we told you we were going to do because we lie. We still have the body, um, the pads, the rest of the, the, the soft pads came in today, right? Yep. So we'll be, get cracking on that real soon. We'll be ready for paint. You guys probably won't see that. No, no, we're not gonna <laughs> sand anymore for you. You get the gist. Your hand 60, like this. 120, 220, 400. Only with the soft pad. Though. Yeah. Not, not if you're using real Blocks. sandpaper. The, yeah. sand, the soft pads are, it's way off. The 60 is more like a 180. We did have someone comment just today on that video that went out. Oh yeah? And I guess he was doing his paint prep and you know who you are, but it was something about his orange peel. He was trying to address that and he saw the video today. Well, I don't know. How do you address said, orange peel? You guys literally read his mind. We read his mind in about? the video. The orange peel about hitting it with the 60, the 120. Oh, how to get that knocked yeah. down. So, yeah. The soft thank pads. You for the, the soft pads, really, though. I mean, that makes a huge difference. Yep. You just gotta be careful on your flat areas. The but edges, no. the corners. Yeah. You know, make sure you're not getting those real hard. Yep. But hopefully, your weight's going good. Hopefully, you guys are making some progress on your builds if you have builds. And uh, we will see you soon. Yeah.